What is up, guys? My name is Logan Tremellon, and this is the Defying Odds podcast. Today, I'm interviewing Rob Liss. You won't see him. Uh, you'll just see me, but you'll hear him, and you'll hear his insane story of how him and his three friends, four friends? A total of, of one of four. Okay. three, And him and his three friends built uh, Clipper Magazine into 1,400 employees covering 60% of the U.S., which they then sold to USA Today. Uh, then they turned... The Barnstormers were about to move from Lancaster City, which is where we're at right now, and they completely turned it around, and now he's focused on building a commercial real estate business along with helping people with mental illness. Rob, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thanks, Logan. Nice to meet you. Of course. Um, so I want to go a little bit into your story. We talked about on the phone um, of how you were born in Long Island. You grew up in Long Island. You then got a headhunter job. Uh, you built some awesome skills. You have a funny story about your wife having to hire her and then fire her. Um, so I want to go into that and just your past and what built you and taught you into basically the man you were when you left that and joined your friends to do a coupon business here in Lancaster on FNM College. It's just, it's an awesome story. I was very intrigued on the phone and I want to share it. So, um, the, uh, it really goes a little bit further back, you know, when we talk about adversity and going through that uh, to try to get successful. Growing up, I've always had a learning disability, but back then, uh, they didn't call it a learning disability. So I've always had to work three times as hard as probably you and um, to achieve whatever I wanted to achieve. So I wasn't exactly winning the uh, award in high school, most likely to succeed. But I know deep in my heart, I started developing a, a chip on my shoulder that like this school isn't for me schooling, but once I'm out there, I know uh, for some reason business is, is something that um, is like oxygen for me. So in high school, I started a, a flea market business uh, and um, just did a whole host of things mowing lawns. And it was always, always just about marketing and business and enjoying myself, you know, you know in doing that. Um, my dad said, okay, uh, to pay for college, you have to either be an accountant, lawyer, or uh, a, a doctor. And even my parents never really kind of got me. I was always like the black sheep in the family. My dad was an electrical engineer for 30 years with one company. You know, so he's like, get an accounting degree, and I can get you a job in the purchasing department someday, and they have really good benefits. It's like, oh, my this is, this is rough. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I lasted. I have an accounting degree. And it lasted uh, six months as an accountant. And then uh, when I was looking for another accounting job, the recruiting company said, you should do this for a living. So uh, I did it, told my parents, and it was like the biggest sin. Like we paid for an accounting degree and what are you doing with your life? Mm -hmm. So I immediately moved out uh, to uh, an apartment in the city with my friend. And I never, um, never came back home because um, I didn't feel that I was really being heard, even though I love my parents, um, they both passed, but they meant the best for me, but they were, you know, they just wanted to take, to take things safe. So um, I started off in headhunting. I failed like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I, Logan, I'm sure your first year, how did it go for you? Not good. <laughs> like, just My first three things that I started did, just didn't go anywhere. What were the first three things? Uh, it was actually a media company, but I didn't know how to take photos or videos or post on social media or anything. You never studied uh, it, you mean? No, I went to school for marketing, started this while I was there on the side, and then I dropped out. And then Where did you go to school? Florida State. I went for okay. a single semester and dropped out. I just, just because you just couldn't. <laughs> well, I wanted to go to school for marketing. I wanted to try it, and one semester in, I'm like, "This is not. I'm not learning anything." And so I was trying my own thing on the side. That wasn't working either. Then I got really sick, um, and when I got really sick, I was also starting a clothing brand. That was my second thing within like three, four months of the first. What kind thing. of clothing brand? Just like it was actually pursuit clothing or pursuit brand. It was just like kind of the same thing, like defying odds, that sort of story. Because I had Crohn's before that, so I wanted to share that story and promote it. Um, and try to make a business out of it. It just didn't didn't go anywhere. I think after that, I got into making my own videos, and then making my own vlogs turned into action sports videos. And action sports videos went back into commercial videos, like the very first thing that I started with. So, but what made you decide to stick with it? Like, were you at, at any time lost? And 
I mean, that's a pretty young age to just say, yeah, so, I have Crohn's disease, I went in college, I stopped. I mean, that's not the typical path that your friends took, I'm sure. No. Uh, Did you feel a little bit lost? I mean, when I was in Florida by myself, it was I was very, I didn't have any friends. Like, it was just me. I actually had to come home because I was sick. I was literally, I was sick. I was bedridden for like three months. Couldn't leave my apartment. Like, really, really sick. And then when my family saw me, that okay, got to come home. I ended up not getting surgery that time, but then I needed surgery again like a year or two after that. But yeah, I was just very independent. And at that time, even when I was really sick, I just remember I think the only thing I listened to was like Gary V, like marketing, do this, read these books. I'm like, okay, did it. I think I was flipping. <laughs> I was like going to yard sales and flipping stuff and like making 60 bucks off shoes and like little things like that just because that's what I loved. Um, but yeah, I mean... I just know I wanted to do something for myself, and college was not just not the move for me. So you could never imagine getting a paycheck and having a boss and working for someone. I could imagine that. Um, I've even had like I think I had one part time job after doing what uh, folding T shirts for a friend. He is a local. He's actually one of our clients now. Um, which one? <laughs> which place? Uh, screen Printing Select. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I would just work there, headphones in, listen to Gary V, listen to stuff like that, post social media because I was trying to grow the clothing brand at right. the time. I, that might have been before I went to college. I don't remember. But um, yeah, so I wasn't, I like, even now, like recently, I haven't told anybody, but I applied for a few jobs, but they weren't just- Even now? They weren't even ordinary jobs. I mean, like Gary V or Alex Ramosi. And I was like in the interviewing process too. Not, I didn't care about the money. I was like, I want to get closest to these massive entrepreneurs. That's all I cared about. I didn't tell anybody because I'm, like, I'm not going to tell anybody and make changes unless I actually get the job. I mean, you want it now, r- now, now, or? Well, I, I still was growing this. I wasn't planning on right. leaving this. Right. But I'm like, I would put this on hold for a year so I can learn under one of possibly one of the greatest entrepreneurs of this generation. So more of, it's almost like more of an internship. Yeah. You would almost pay them. <laughs> Literally. Right. Yeah. Like he, on uh, uh, the that, interview, that, they're like, how much do you want to get paid? I'm like, honestly, I didn't even think about that. So what was one interview that you went to of, of like you felt like this is, I want to learn from that person? Well, there's only two people that I even tried. It was Gary Vee and Alex Ramosi. Okay. Alex oh, so that was it. Yeah, okay. that was literally it. Okay. They're the only people who I follow consistently who I'm like, I could learn a crap, like everything, not everything, but a lot by being close to them. You, do you are familiar yeah, with yeah, them? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm saying today, present, you, you, you don't have that interest now. You well, know how to do it. Only for those people. Right. That's yeah, it. Yeah, right. exactly. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, again, your background, that's why I'm here, is um, it's contagious. If, yeah. you're, uh, if anyone is in business, um, you have to get on this podcast <laughs> with this young guy. Uh, he uh, has the poise. And the questions and the uh, sincerity of a person that um, you just want to see being successful. <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm here today. I've never been on a podcast before, but um, <clears throat> just I'm very impressed. I appreciate um, it. So uh, that's great. So, so give, so, give so, me more of the story so, so of your head hunting because yeah, so, it was yeah, awesome. So it's when a, you're it's, yeah, it's a lot of. So <laughs> so here we are, chip on my shoulder struggled every everything everything is like hard everything and my the only thing that relaxed me was playing tennis Mm -hmm. that was that was my kind of sport and um and just reading books about business again you can it's it's you (laughs) without going (laughs) i want to bore everybody (laughs) so um again going for that accounting degree really um was a struggle again you know how to how do you do it? But I did it. Uh, so when I became a headhunter, I remember uh, sitting around Thanksgiving, and uh, my dad is at the head of the table, and all the cousins, you know, the big dining room table, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, everyone there. Yeah. So Robbie, uh, what what wh- what are you doing? Uh, well, um, I work for a personnel agency, and uh, my dad would interrupt and say, in the most loving way, again, lovely guy. He would say, um, uh, Robbie works at a pro personal agency, but he doesn't know what he wants to do yet. <laughs> that was my title. Yeah. <laughs> <For whatever. laughs> oh, yeah. Then I figured it out from working really hard and failing, not succeeding. Mm-hmm. First one in, last one, you know, whatever. And um, then I made more money than my dad the second year. I showed him my paycheck. And that was my life with my parents, like being very nervous and scary, scaring me. And then after doing it, then it's like, oh my God, 
you got to stick with this, yeah. you know? So um, I did that for eight years. And the, again, the funny story, crazy story is uh, <laughs> I uh, was very shy uh, meeting girls and stuff. And I see this really, um, really pretty uh, girl coming down. It was her first day. And I'm making believe I'm on the phone, you know, but I wasn't. <laughs> I just couldn't look at her. And I wasn't her boss at the time. And she was just super cool. Just uh, it was like Elaine from Seinfeld walking in. Fun, cool person. And um, and I'm always, but then I got to work, you know, and um, she tried. Then I became her boss. And um, I'm noticing uh, that uh, she wasn't succeeding with it. i like, okay, so let me do some sales training, you know, New York City, Headhunter, mm -hmm. like I know what I'm doing, you know. So I said, Laura, you know, you, you got to make 100 calls a day and maybe you'll get three people or four people on the phone. And that's when the games begin. You got to know what to say, yeah. you know, on, on what to do. But you have to be able to do the quantity. And then when you know when you finally have somebody, what to do with it. She's the only person in eight years that ever said this to me. Why would I want to waste my time making 100 calls and get rejected? <laughs> it's like, that could be a problem. <laughs> <I was laughs> yeah. like, so um, she didn't really, it, she didn't take to it. Mm -hmm. But we were just really, really good friends. And um, I, I took her, uh, we always would go out to lunch with our staff at a restaurant around the corner. And uh, I took her to lunch, um, tr trying to let her go, even though we all wanted her to stay. Just let's, let's figure out another position for her kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And um, we're walking out, and she's like, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm going back upstairs, am I? <laughs> I said, no. You know, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll speak to you tonight, you know. Yeah. So I fixed her up with um, my best friend at the time, and he was running a newspaper. That's really more her thing, publishing. And they went out for many, many years, I think, and <laughs> whatever. And I was um, dating someone else at the time. And, but we were always all very close. And um, they broke up, I broke up, and uh, we got together. And uh, it was uh, just a crazy story that we, you know, that we share. Yeah. And uh, I always say, now I work for her, you know? And uh, <laughs> again, she's, um, she's my life. She really, uh, she's the reason why I joined Clipper. Because we were living in Brooklyn at the time. And uh, I was like, you know when people say, I don't know if you felt this yet. Well, actually you did say it. You know, you, th you want to make a lot of money, mm -hmm. but if your soul isn't fulfilled, like, you kind of ignore it. Yeah. You, you know, when you're younger, and then time goes by, and you're like, I don't know. So um, I quit, and, um, and then my friend Steve, so the Clipper story is, we're going to, um, we met at the Concord Hotel in the Catskill Mountains. I was a waiter, and he was a cabana boy. And just instantly, instantly, we became best friends. Just the, the most giving, kindest soul, brothers the same way, his mom, um, just the greatest person in the world. And um, they just took me in as family for, for, from day one. He grew up in Riverdale in the Bronx. And um, him and his college roommate, Ian, started, uh, you know, it was called the uh, Campus Coupon Clipper at the time. Yeah. Bobby went to Vassar. He joined, I think, a year later. And then um, coming from such a conservative background, Steve's like, you got to do this too. It's so much fun. And I'm like, you're doing this in your dorm. I'm wearing my suit with my briefcase <laughs> yeah. going in the, you know, uh, on the train. And um, so, so fast forward, I qu quit headhunting. And um, Steve was always helping me in my headhunting thing because we're always talking about business every day, a couple of times a day. And um, I was always trying to talk to him about Clipper. So um, my wife is the one that said, um, you know, maybe we should move to Lancaster. Steve, you know, uh, Stevie and Bobby were saying, hey, maybe, you know, this would be good. And I just didn't want to do it. I'm like a New Yorker yeah. kind of thing. And she's like, she's pregnant at the time. And it's pretty cool, you know. Yeah. So um, she just said, you know, you're, you're a successful guy. Like, believe in yourself. Let's go do it. And um, so I was the 14th employee. And um, Clipper mainly was a local coupon company, just Lancaster, Reading, Harrisburg, York. And uh, the three of them are, um, are amazing. They all have um, 
I never saw anything like it. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it was like a band, you know, like they worked morning, noon, and night, loved it. Um, challenges that go on forever. I learned so much from all three of them. And um, once again, I got off to a slow start. You can just look in Steve's eyes and the guys and they're like, so you're supposed to be this guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're not? <laughs> so it was like, uh-oh. So um, I had to double down again. And um, I, once I figured it out, um, I realized something, and maybe I can share it with you uh, or anyone you know, listening. Um, you know, when people say, I want to be in business, it's such a broad term. Mm -hmm. I never thought about it before. And there's different stages of business. It's what you're doing right now in the room. No one created it, but you right now with this table and yeah. what you're doing. I'm the guy to come in now when there's like an office and there's a desk and there's two microphones here. Once I understand it and believe in the concept, then I, I, I'm good at stage two. Yeah. As partners uh, with, um, ev uh, with everything, all of us, including the, our top staff, none of us were good at point fourteen hundred employees. <laughs> that was never our. Yeah, you're dealing with a whole other set of um, issues. Yeah. So, um, I guess what I'm saying is, especially for a younger person, you got to kind of know your lane. You got to know not just business, but you got to know what part of the cycle mm -hmm. do you think you can excel at. Yeah, and I couldn't do what you just did here. That's why I'm in a bit. I'm, I'm in awe. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm a, or what Steve, Bobby, and Ian did. Mm -hmm. But I need, I need, I need to play bowling. I can bowl as long as I have a lane. Yeah, and, and what is it called? The bumpers. But the bumpers. Yeah. Um, and make me feel like I have all the freedom, or I'm like an invisible fence guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I always need that support. You know, c kind of thing. Yeah to be able to do what needs to be done. So um, Clipper gave me that. And what was wonderful is um, <clears throat> what the gift of Clipper, what we were able to do is really allow people to take whatever they were doing in their particular region as far as they can take it. And then it was almost like this uh, self-awareness where they're like, you know what, I thought I wanted to be a manager. Because that's what, I th that's what you think you want to do, yeah. and you kind of realize, kind of not maybe something I should do. Yeah. And again, as leaders of the company, we were never good leaders because <laughs> it was growing so fast. Yeah. So we had to find people that were just as into it as us. Yeah. And that's kind of how a lot of so my my background from headhunting, not from accounting, <laughs> yeah. um, is knowing how to identify talent and then retain or try to help them find another lane. That, that doesn't mean that, that they're not successful people. Yeah. It's just this isn't the right fit. Mm -hmm. Can't teach a fish how to climb a tree. You can't. I say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was going to say it, but I'm glad you did. Yeah. Guys, did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. I think we'll have to edit that out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, that's good. That's good. So um, anyway, that's, that's kind of – so the, the, the Clipper story was um, – the other thing we learned is uh, when you're working with people or just in life, um, I kind of call it the cycle of life. And it, it, it goes – I don't know if you've, you're so young, but it sounds like you've gone through it. You go through f like a five-year period where you're on the climb. It's not money. Mm -hmm. It's something inside here. Yeah. Whatever it is that is driving you to get to a point. You have Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. Then you're at the top or trying to be at the top. Now you're on the slide down. You have the same resume if you were applying for a job, but your head, your heart's in it, but your head can't get it in the game. Yeah. The job is to find out not what's on the resume, but what, you, what your goals are and what's inside in your heart, it's all invisible because it's going to say the same dates. And I can interview for a job five years ago. I would get the job based on my credentials, but I wasn't in the frame of mind to do it. Yeah. So, And I started studying that, why people made it and why people didn't. And all of a sudden, you find out that they're going through different challenges in their life. 
but they have to work. So when you start really learning about that, the idea is to find the person that, again, has a bit of a chip on their shoulder, ready to work, and going for that five-year client, because we know we're going to be with them forever. It's a marriage when you're yeah. working with Clipper. Mm-hmm. We just don't hire people. You're like part of the family. It's yeah. a fa- I mean, that's what we're known for. So we're going to go through the down cycle. We don't want to start with the down cycle, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, because they haven't, the loyalty isn't there yet. But those five years, we accomplished a lot together. We want to be there for them. We know what's going to happen, whatever it might be unexpected stuff that it's going to go down, but you know what? Those kinds of people, including myself or you, anyone, it's going to go back up again if you're a winner yeah. and what you do. So um, that's, the, that's the hiring gift that we were able to do as a team. Yeah, so that really helped you. Were you in charge of hiring for Clipper? I wasn't a human resource guy. I was a guy that helped build Clipper outside of Lancaster. Okay. With some other leaders. Yeah. And everyone was just amazing. But again, there were some other people there that out of, uh, again, me being the 14th person, uh, there were a couple other senior people that were just phenomenal. But so I, I couldn't hold a candle to them. But I, again, once I get rolling, again, it's that back from when I was little, that mm-hmm. chip on my shoulder. I just don't give up. Yeah. I never give up in, in whatever I'm doing because it, nothing comes easy for me. So I just have to, I have to outwork everybody. Yeah. So people in Clipper, or not people in, in sales, treat it as a nine to five job. I would treat it as if there's a store open in a local area, when it, if it opens at nine, I start my day at nine until the last pizza shop closes and the guy I'm knocking on the door at 10 o'clock at night. If, if they're open, I'm open. And... And, and that's what I used to do. Yeah. Opening up these markets, hiring, letting people go, letting them fly, you know, and, um, it, and, but, but it wasn't me. It was, it was an amazing group of people. So that's, again, when you did the intro, it was a little, yeah. it was a little much, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't me or, the, or the partners. It was, it was the talent that we were able to get yeah. and retain. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for listening this far. This is all we have for the video version. Uh, Rob didn't want to be on video and I was respecting his privacy. I was respecting it because he was letting me share his story. So if you want to hear this whole thing, I think it's an hour and 20 minutes long. All the links down below. It's on Apple. It's on Spotify. It's pretty much everywhere you listen. It is everywhere you listen to podcasts. So it's all there. Links are down below. Thank you so much for watching.